Everybody choose something good. Uh, dick and feet pics. Cheese. <laughs> Sp spaghetti and meatballs. All right. Ability to come up with a compelling title for a movie about the good thing. All right. Well, dick and feet pick probably is last. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I've earned that. Um, dick and feet pick two. Electric boogaloo. Nope, still last. Still not nothing good come of that. Listen, I'd go see a movie about spaghetti and meatballs. Literally, if it was just a movie showing footage of spaghetti and meatballs, like. But also, but also cheese though. But also cheese. True. Cheese is a great name for a movie. Let's not even okay, lie. Okay, but yeah. it, puppies, anything. True. True. Yeah. I saw the secret. Life. I feel like I'll, I'll 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 throw I'll jump on this grenade. I'll take third. Th oh, I'll take I'll take sec I'll take second. You're just gonna give Octo second? Oh my god! Look, I'm Listen, not winning this. I don't have much fight left in me, Jesse, these days. <laughs> <laughs> but we're almost. I pick my battles. <laughs> but we're almost to the <laughs> to the meteor shower. Okay, okay. Let's let's go to the same place again. Uh, Scout HQ. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You spend all day trying to learn how to use the North Star to know your location and never get lost. It's a fierce challenge and everyone gets like super lost. You say fuck it and try the, to text the North Star to ask for directions. Maybe no one ever asked. Of course, this achieves nothing. It's a star and you should stop trying to resort to sheer absurdity to solve your problems. You get no badge and no one does. It was all a trick to test that and it wasn't even nighttime. But Coach awards you with plus two creativity for your lateral thinking. Oh, sweet. You're sprinting as fast as you can. Little Orphan Alan is stuck at the bottom of a well. What? You're the only one that can help. As you're running, you see Joy suntanning nearby. And she waves you over. Yes, Joy is her number one ultimate summer crush and you'll do anything for her. You completely forgot what you were doing and run over. <laughs> what a joy to see you. Hey there. You aren't doing anything important, were you? At least nothing more important than flirting with me, uh -oh. right? Whoa! <laughs> By the way, sprinting shirtless and dripping with sweat isn't a bad look for you to Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> You blush like an anime character who's talking to their crush. You are talking to your crush, but your anime but your eyes are way too appropriately proportioned to be considered anime. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that my screamo band, Ventagram, has a show tonight. We're playing that super gross pub nearby, <laughs> the Piss Rec Bar. <laughs> you should come see us. You'd get to see me scream my guts out in a non-literal way. Oh, Damien and Dahlia are in the band too. And you kind of care about them, right? Hmm. No pressure though. The pub technically has an occupancy limit of three <laughs> people, so I can basically guarantee you'll die if there's even a small fire. <laughs> Holy shit, Joy just invited you to go to a location, and she's going to be at that location! That's basically a date, as far as you're concerned. You cannot fuck this one up. Later that night, you roll up to the piss wreck bar with a government ID in your thoughtiest concert outfit. As soon as you go in, someone throws a glass of beer at your head. Every single surface of this bar is filthy and sticky. It's packed and everyone here is either very hot or very ugly, but they all look like they could beat your ass easily. This is an unquestionably the perfect location for a screamo concert. Piss wreck bar shreds! Oh, and there's Joy. Hey, you. Mmm, look what the cat dragged in. Thanks for coming, Totina. We're about to go on right after they finish setting up Damien's drawing rig slash flamethrower. <laughs> Vent to Graham forever! In my mega explosive drum set! It weighs 3,200 pounds! It also uh, is a uh, harpoon gun, and it is illegal! Vent to Graham is life! <laughs> <laughs> Arson! Fuck yes! Ventagram fucks hard! Ventagram is violence! Come, Dahlia! We gotta do a pre-show tradition! Fight in the audience! This show goes hard! Yeah. By the way, I'm happy that you made it, Totina. Realistically, you probably didn't have anything else to do tonight, but it still means a lot. I should go do my vocal warm-ups, but I'll keep an eye out for you when I'm on stage. Cheer loud for me, okay? Wow, you are definitely in love with this goth witch. Ventagram is about to go on. Impress Joy by making sure the concert goes smoothly. What are you gonna do to help? Ooh. Be the mic checker. You'll check Joy's microphone to make sure it's not poisoned. Be the first clapper. You'll get the crowd hyped AF by nailing a perfectly timed first clap after every song. Oh! I'm not gonna tell you because I want you to fail, but... It feels pretty obvious what the second one is. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's charm, but... <laughs> um, or I guess clapping first is kind of a bold move. Oh no! Um, um, um... Don't disappoint me. I'll go with me. the first one, because there's no way it's bold. Mic checker. Erica putting on the pressure. Okay. Seriously. Yes. Hey, oh, what? No! Oh, 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 I hope you're ready for pure oh, fucking rage. We are better. How the hell was checking the mic a bold move? Before Joy can finish, you shove her out of the way, grab the mic, and announce oh, the no, entire I'm audience doomed. that you're Ventigram's official mic checker. Obviously, you get booed. Oh, oh I guess that's actually a kind of smart idea. We needed to check the sound before we started anyway. Good catch, Yeah, Tatina. I thought it was smart, too. Yeah. You tell Joy that you know nothing about screamo or bands or sounds in general. You're here to check the microphone for poison! Ugh. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we don't need you to do that. Actually, you know what? I am entirely sure that we don't need you to do that. You begin your microphone poison check by taking one cautious lick of the microphone. You wait a moment. No poison yet, but you gotta be thorough so you keep licking the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Jesus fucking Christ, I can't listen to this fucking licking sound! It's like ASMR, but somehow more creepy? How can something be creepier than ASMR? The microphone tastes a bit weird. That's probably just the taste of metal. But with each lick, you get more and more of that metal flavor. It's weirdly satisfying. Yum! God, why? Why is she still licking the microphone? It's so fucking unsettling! <laughs> but I can't look away! Oh no. At this point, you're pretty sure the microphone isn't poison, but it's fun to lick. The combination of metal taste and static shock gives you a satisfying brain tingles. Enough of this. Dear goddess Totina, for the love of all the pagan gods in the fucking pantheon, stop licking the microphone! For the first time in eight minutes, you stop licking the microphone. Turns out half the audience left. Several people threw rotting tomatoes at you, but you didn't notice at all. How the fuck are we going to perform now? Because I am not using that gross-ass mic. It's dripping wet with Totina's saliva. Oh, no. <sighs> I don't blame you. I wouldn't touch that spit mic either, but that's the only mic the bar has. They told me they only had one when I asked if we could if I could shove a mic up my ass. Worst episode <laughs> ever. Fuck. There's no way for us to perform, so we have to cancel the fucking show. Thanks for ruining our concert, Totina. I won't forget this fuck up. I assure you. <laughs> Joy misunderstood your intentions, but maybe some of Ventigram's fans realized you were just being a good mic checker. You open up social media looking for some validation. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh-oh. Looks like the audience misunderstood too. They thought your mic licking was part of Ventigram's performance, and they fucking hated it! You've ruined Ventigram's show, their reputation, and your relationship with Joy, all with a few licks. Also, turns out the mic was poison, so you lose minus two fun and minus <laughs> okay. one boldness. My god. Wow. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna win the game. Here I go. Send me to the lake. Before you go to the lake, you decide to make the most fun inflatable toy to float on that you possibly can. You combine many of your favorite fun things. Ice cream, tabletop games, watching your enemies fail, ducks. The resulting amalgamation is certainly... interesting. Even if it doesn't exactly float on the water. You decide to name your toy Dr. Frankenfun, or maybe you should name it Dr. Frankenfun's Monster. Just beholding the horror you've created gives you plus two fun. Here we go. You see Joy trying to do something normal on the beach, so you head over to ruin it with sexy. Just as you're about to strike your most erotic pose, Aravi stomps over and steals your thunder. We need to go grind some more eggs. Whoa! <laughs> Joy! E enchant my armor! I'm going into the lake! I need a break. An armor? I know I shouldn't ask, but why? For violence reasons! This stupid lake monster called me short the other day, but I was just too low level to crush him like he deserved! Take that, noob! that I found this armor of crushing plus 10? That dumb wet dink hole won't know what hit him, but it will be me. I will hit him. <laughs> the only thing that's going to hit him if you wear that armor is a stunned sense of relief as you plummet to the bottom and drown. It's way too heavy. Mm. Wow, Joy, commenting on my armor's weight? I thought you were better than that. I came here to be enchanted, not body shamed. <gasps> Hex. Come on, help me out here. Chillax. You think she listens to me? That's cute. Anyway, it's fine. I have some friends I've been meeting to visit in hell. Bye, loser. Don't talk to me like I'm not here, you two. 
I'll show you both. I'm going into the lake and stabbing that lake monster. <gasps> Wait, at least let me enchant the armor to weigh a little less. It'll keep you from... Hmm. Drowning. Oh boy. Hey, lifeguards, over here. Whoa. Whoa, hey, chill out. What's up? Mm. Aravi's drowning in the middle of the lake. Didn't you see her from the lifeguard tower? <laughs> the colors. Oh, uh, we put blackout curtains on the windows in there. All the sunlight makes it hard to sleep. Uh, <laughs> man, one of us uh -huh. should probably get her, huh? But I'm just really not feeling it right now. Rock, paper, scissors? Uh, you're on. You better not throw rock because that's what I'm planning to throw. The two lifeguards square off and proceed to both throw rocks rock 15 times in a row. Enough of this. Ugh, surely there must be a better way to decide this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Duh. Stu, grab the emergency scrabble board. You don't stand a chance. Man, if Aravi dies in the lake, it's really gonna kill the horny summer vibes. Quick, suggest a faster way to decide who saves her! Uh, compose an insightful online quiz that determines who's best suited to save Aravi. Or propose a competition so you can save Aravi the fastest. Loser has to save Aravi. Um, the second one. That first one sounds smarts, and I'm I'm big dumb. So. Okay. <gasps> Are Ooh. you kidding? How am I not so fun? How not am I not so, so fun? It's the last round. It's the last round. Dude, that's an awesome idea. Yeah, that means the person who ends up saving her will be the person who's the worst at saving her. Whoa. Wait, is that like bad? Only one way to find out. Ready, set, go. The two lifeguards dive into the lake where they should have been this whole time, but race towards the rapidly sinking Aravi. Going swimmingly. I win! I saved her! That means you've gotta save her. I'm totally not drowning. What? No one saved me! I didn't need saving! I was sinking on purpose for the stat boost! Ooh, Plus, you guys got my bagel butter. wet. Not <laughs> cool. <laughs> Dude, that wasn't fair. Swimming is hard for me because I'm made of stone, you know that. Hey man, I smoked the same stuff you did. No excuses. <sighs> Come on, best of three. Vakers, please! <laughs> You're on. <laughs> but it's too late. The two lifeguards have already dragged Aravi back out into the lake so they can competitively save her again. You watch in horror as the two of them spend the next three hours dragging Aravi out of the water and then tossing her in again. <laughs> that was sad. Congratulations, Donkey Kong feet pick. You just invented competitive waterboarding. I knew <laughs> I shouldn't have let you handle this. Draguna Mikoides Tricorum Satisti. <sighs> Boreas Invectum, or whatever. <laughs> Joy waves her hand and the entire lake turns into an ice monster who gently deposits Aravi and the two giggling lifeguards on shore. Before melting back into liquid, the ice monster also flips you off. Rude! You lose minus two charm and minus one creativity. I'm so charming, you guys. Uh, wait, wait, how do I, how do I make Damien my wife? Like, where do I go? Um, uh, if, if you're on a Damien track, he'll show up there. Oh, uh, okay. Um, let's go, wait, where have I not been yet? The, let's go to the, the lake. Let's go to the lake. Uh, the lake is blocked off right now. Ah, uh, um, what are the what are the front two? Let's have a scout HQ. Uh, scout HQ is blocked off. Love that for me. Um, okay, so I'll just have to go somewhere I've been. Let's go to the manor. That day in the haunted manor, you find a bunch of ghosts playing craps. You're terrible at gambling, but that's never stopped you before. You face off against the craps champion, slam all of your chips down on the table, and cry out, "I bet my immortal soul!" Everyone gasps, and then someone says, Dude, chill, we're just playing, like, to have fun. Nobody's even betting real money. Oh, you're not used to such low-stakes betting around camp. Honestly, it's a relief. You bet plus two boldness against the champion instead, and you win! Afterwards, you manage to convince Damien that back massages keep away mosquitoes, and you're really <laughs> getting after it when... <sighs> hey, Ed, has that weird chuckling lamp always been over there? 
What weird lamp? Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> <sighs> There's something weird about this lamp. I just can't put my finger on it. On what? <laughs> well, in the words of the great Mahatma Gandhi, when in doubt, set it on fire. You're pretty sure that's not what Gandhi said, and you tell Damien so. Really? Huh. I tried to read a biography of Gandhi once, but I couldn't understand it, so I set it on fire. I thought that was the lesson the book was trying to teach me. <laughs> that was about five minutes ago. The book is still on fire, actually. In fact, that's what I was planning to use to burn this lamp. Watch. <laughs> no need, Damien. The only person who's been burned here is you, by my impeccable disguise. <laughs> Fucking Gene Parmesan Whoa, that's over crazy. here. crazy! <laughs> Whoa, Council Lafarge! You were the lamp the whole time? Cameron Orenthal Guilty. Flodge. Pretty cool, huh? <sighs> only if you think lying is cool, which I do, but only when I do it, and not when people do it to me. Huh? I wasn't trying to lie to you, Damien. I was only trying to teach you a lesson about the wonders of camouflage. <laughs> Get real. Camouflage is for stupid babies who are too lame to solve their problems with violence. Sneak level 100. Oh, so it's violence you're in just, you do, huh? I'll have you know that in the heady, heady, what? Is it heady or heady? I thought it's heady. Heady days. I, I think it's heady, but is it Lena Heady? Heady. Lena Heady? It's, I, you know, you're just, you're confusing me more, Jesse Cox. I'm sorry. I'll have, I'll have you know that in the heady, he, he, days of my youth, I once disguised myself as a baguette in order to stab the French prime minister. Mm hmm? French doesn't have a prime minister. They, they have a president. <laughs> Only because I stabbed the prime minister. <laughs> that just might work. I don't know camouflage could be used for stabbing. This changes everything. But I still don't think it's for me. It's pretty hard to blend in when you have such a uh, blemishless crimson red skin. Hmm. Don't worry about that, son. I can change my skin to any color I want, and I'm a master of disguise. So clearly skin color doesn't matter here. All we need to do is find the perfect way for you to blend into your surroundings. Ooh, ooh you've got an idea. No, I don't. No, I yes, don't. Yes, you do. Get a high-powered job in the fashion industry and make red the in color for this season and next season everything. Hi, Damien and... Uh, I'm going to say the first one. <laughs> okay. Stealth mode. Ooh, so creative. Yes. A classic technique! It's like I say in my best-selling disguise handbook. If you can't change how you look, completely alter your surroundings to match how you look! Proud of you! You're a real hero, sand lover, volunteering for this dangerous job. Here, I'll help disguise you as a fashion icon. Counselor Flage disguises you by putting a beret on your head and dressing you in a trash bag with armholes. Thankfully, all fashion is an elaborate lie, so when you apply for CEO of Vogue, everybody assumes you're too fashionable to even comprehend, and you are hired immediately! Once hired, you discover that Vogue is the most powerful institution in the modern world, controlling not only fashion, but the economy, all world governments, and even people's thoughts! You declare, next issue's theme to be red, and herald it as the most iconic color of all time, then you make the next six months issues red themed just to be safe. And just to be extra safe, use Vogue's vast resources to implant microscopic mind control devices in all the world's water, making red everyone's favorite color. And also destroying their ability to see other ones. Hooray for fashion! Everyone starts wearing red all the time and painting everything red and stabbing each other because they like the way red blood flows out of their veins. Green is cancelled. Everyone agrees that it's actually just another shade of red. Uh, you make plans for red to absorb two to five more colors in the next fiscal year. Nice work. Brad! Hey, Shane Lover, thanks for mind controlling everyone in the entire world in order to make it easier for me to hide. Now that nobody can tell the difference between red and green, I can blend into the forest, and nobody has any idea I'm there. I've stabbed like 18 people! Whoa, you're also, a I've been voted Monster Magazine's sexiest monster alive for forever. You're the best! Hell yeah! You promise to celebrate with Damien in a romantic manner, just as soon as you can tell him apart from the background. Meanwhile, you gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. Alright! Hell I just yeah! You changed the world! Camp, I think, ended during the course of that story. Yeah, I think camp was over. <laughs> yeah, you you totally ended camp. Alright, um... I'm going to... The woods. That day you get lost in the woods. I love those squirrels. You decide to study the tree's bark and moss patterns to solve the situation. 
By reading the tree's bark, you realize which direction north is. By reading another tree's bark, you learn the exact age of the tree, 73 years old. By reading yet another tree's bark, you learn the three... The tree likes Irish poetry and believes Buffy and Spike were the ultimate ship on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Absolutely not. <laughs> Whoa, so much useless knowledge. You gain plus two smarts. I'm worried that I have so many nines that no matter what I choose here, I will fail. I think you can do it. But who cares about I that? I don't know. It's time to meet up I with don't Dahlia. Know. A nine she, is not a ten. She invited you back to her tent for a bit of light Mexican professional wrestling. Man. Ah, nothing like a bit of lucha libre to put some hair on your chest. And then a couple full body wax. A couple's full body wax to remove said hair. You ready, punk? The next two hours are agonizingly painful bliss. Dahlia totally kicks her ass, of course, but afterwards you watch Studio Ghibli movies and share a romantic ice bath. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today, Skies Man. I had a great time. I'm really glad you came to summer camp, too. So are you. Maybe you could even keep this party going. You ask Dahlia what plans she has after camp. Well, I mean, summer break has been nice, but I can't vacation from reality forever. I need to get back to being the commander my army needs me to be. I'm here to save Our the work day. work is never done. There are countless kingdoms left to conquer, and as hell's strongest and sexiest warlord, it's my destiny to conquer them all. Hmm, well, if Dolly is so into conquering stuff, maybe she could try conquering the most difficult kingdom of all. Uh, oh, you mean Ikea? I tried that, but that place is a labyrinthine pit of Swedish furnished madness. My army's barely escaped with their sanity intact. I know, I can't find my way out. What? No, she could try conquering your heart. Oh, oh you're flirting with me. That makes much more sense. Hmm. Well, I must admit, I've never considered conquering your heart before. I do like you quite a bit, though, so maybe... This is no! War. Wait! I'm supposed to be a hardened commander! I can't let my feelings interfere with my work! This is real life, not Dunder Mifflin! I have a lot of kingdoms on my to-conquer list. If I'm gonna use important military resources and demon power to conquer your heart instead, I need a good reason why. I don't know that I have the reason! I think you do. <laughs> Damn, this got real fast. <laughs> but you really want to impress Dahlia? How can you convince her that conquering your heart is way more valuable than conquering any other kingdom? This is rough. Okay. Doctor History Book, so it says all the great commanders of history have tried and failed to conquer your heart. <sighs> Explain that your heart has strategic value to further conquer other important territories, such as your kidneys and your lungs. Hmm. Here's the thing, no matter what I choose, I mean, I feel like across the board. The same. Yeah, none of these are going to be fun answers, so it's a nine across the board. I don't know I can succeed. Um, all right, what do I feel like inside my bones? Yeah, what's the gut um, reaction here, Jesse? Well, I feel like she would respond more to other commanders failing to have tried to conquer my heart and that she could do so. Yes. Right? I feel like that's that's a valuable thing. I, for I her. agree, I agree. Ooh. Ah. Nice. You hop out of the bath for a second and attack your old world history textbook with a sharpie marker. You hand it back over to Dahlia. Oh, you want to read now? I mean, I don't really know what history knowledge has to do with being an intelligent military leader, but I'll give it a shot. Chapter 69, The Skazman Wars. Many textbooks have been censored to remove this dark, bloody, sexy war period because historians couldn't handle the horny, but here we've detailed them below. There was the War of the Roses everybody gave to Skazman, the French kissing Skazman revolution. Even WW2 is short for Will We Won't We Have Sex with Skazman. Wow, fascinating! Everyone wanted to conquer Skazman's heart and also the rest of his sexy bits. Every power-hungry warlord tried to plant their flagpole in that thick, juicy landmass. All of that tension finally burst in the battle, the famous Battle of the Bulge, in everybody's metaphorical pants thinking about how hot Skazman is. Thousands of volunteer soldiers died for dad ass. Everyone was exhausted. <laughs> 
They all returned to their barracks for some rest, but gasp! There was only one army cot! They would <laughs> all have to share. <laughs> so Louis the Sixteenth, Napoleon Bonaparte, Queen Victoria, Marie Antoinette, and also Audrey Hepburn, cuz fucking in, also got into the cot with Skazman. <laughs> and they learned they didn't need to fight to conquer Skazman's heart, cuz there was room for everybody in that sexy kingdom. So they all had a huge orgy. It was super sexy. Then Skazman killed them all because he was saving his heart to be conquered by Dahlia Kano, the greatest conqueror ever! Ooh, wow, admirable. that was a riveting tale. I love the Dahlia Kano bit. I, I didn't realize I had such a huge destiny. I should read more often. <laughs> Maybe I'll conquer your heart after all, Skazman. I wouldn't want to let fate or Audrey Hepburn down. Score! History truly is written by the victors. You gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. I earned Here that. Here we go. Here I earned we that. go. All right. Oh Let's boy, oh my god. Who do you choose? Oh shoot, dude. I gotta go with Joy. All right. I failed the last <laughs> turn, so yes. I guess we'll find out. All right. I, man, fucking, what am I even doing with my life? I'm going no, no. by myself. I can't. You even... always do this, and okay, the game always okay. mocks you for fine, it. Fine, fine. I'll go with Calculester. I don't care. What? <laughs> you did nothing with Calculester. I died. You're going to Calculester. I sat with him once on a log, and that means something. It does. We log sat together, Jesse. All right. Who else could right. possibly be? Let's go. Here's the thing. My smarts are twelve, and Damien's dumb. So like. Damien's like boldness and fun, right? Uh, yes. Damien's a lot of the stats you don't have. Oh, love that for me. Why don't I? Ugh. Let I'll ask him. I've 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 been rejected by him every time I've played this game. So like, what's different? <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's just go. Sure. Um, sure. All right. This is my time. This, this is, is it. my this is time. It, I can do this. Okay. Dolly, I can do this. All right. I believe in the dream. You finally gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. You wanna be my summer fling? Oof, here's the problem. I just ordered from his pizza place, okay? And they have the promo in which you get a free pizza as long as you don't oh date Sam. Oh my god! <laughs> You're not that bad, but pizza is definitely still the better option here. So get lost. I have some free pizza to order. Go get a sunburn! Oh, you failed at finding summer love. No! It's very depressing. But you don't give up. Instead, you decide to... No, you know what? I don't narrate for losers. You don't deserve <laughs> to get more narration. Yikes, narrator! Calm down. You lost. That's the story. Get over it. Next. <laughs> Light it up! Damn. You're so Ruthless. mean! You finally gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the media shower with you. You want to be a summer fling, huh? That's so no. nice of you, but... Uh... Whoa, did you hear that? I just heard a strange noise. I think it was some evil of sorts lurking somewhere and plotting to destroy the world. I'd love to give you an answer, but duty calls! Come I'll need a vacation from you. After being rejected, you spend most of the meteor shower crying alone in your tent. <laughs> Some days after that, the police come to your place. Apparently, one of the campers at Camp Spooky was brutally murdered during the night of the meteor shower. They're checking on everyone, but most people have an alibi, as they were on a date with someone else. But not you! <laughs> you end up in jail, reminded of another perk of getting a date. It makes a good alibi. Wow. Sure thing. It's me! I've got this. You finally gather the courage Why? to ask a real up to the meteor shower with you. <laughs> Why would you think you got this? You desire to summer fling with me? What a colorful proposal. I see the misunderstanding. You know that I want to experience life on its various forms. This is a correct observation. However, there are some aspects of life I have no interest in exploring. Dating you is one of these aspects of life I just mentioned. Calculester, no! I see how one could get confused about that. What a silly misunderstanding, friend dicks on feet pit. <laughs> <laughs> Starting rejection protocol. 
I thought we had something, Calculester. I was convinced. I was convinced he was the one. Although being brutally rejected, you move on and focus on becoming a renowned cardiologist. But your family never approves. Every time you gather for family dinners, your mother showers you in disappointment, and your dad mentions how he never wanted a nerd for a doctor for a child, uh, but a cool person who fucks. They disown you and make Kenny the main in inheritor of the family fortune. Kenny is not even your brother. He's just a very cool dude your dad met at the supermarket. Kenny totally fucks. Yeah. Oh my god, Jesse. I've never gotten a date with Dolly before. This could be it. This could be the time. You finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. I didn't. <laughs> this is it. Oh, uh, summer fling between you and me? Yes. Ah, yes. A summer fling is an essential part of having the best summer ever. I hope she just throws you. Look. I even had it on my list. Almost forgot. Good catch, Skazman. I'm glad I have you around. Let's check Summer Fling off my list together. You're <gasps> the best summer. Nice. Yo! Nice. They did it. The last day of camp was dreamy. You and Dahlia spent hours trying to get as many Monster Scout badges as you could before the meteor shower. You got a badge for learning how to tell apart black-footed weasels from black-footed albatrosses. You got a badge for helping coach with a very difficult crossword. And then you got a badge for learning 15 different ways to kiss. Nice. Woo! When the meteor shower started, you'd already earned a new badge in secret for falling in love with a buff, beautiful woman. Yeah! Thank you God. One of us yeah. yeah. That would have been very sad if not. I can't believe I was working towards Calculester the whole time. The whole... You definitely were. I the, believe you. The whole time. The whole time! <laughs> Before no, 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 sure, those sure. weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, we saw summer coming to an end. We all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older, I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies, sung for centuries. Wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. And Aww. cute credits. Oh, that was fun. It's so cute. I'm sorry, can that I just say fun. that I love the credit sequence so much? Yeah, dude. It's great. That's really it's cute. It's incredible. Yeah. Real quickly, let's let's do this thing where people can find you and uh, shower you with love. Erica, where can people find you and shower you with love? Uh, to shower me with love, uh, they can find me at just, it's just Erica Lindbeck on Twitter and Twitch and Instagram. Yeah. There you go. Shower with love. Shower with love. Thank you for having me, Jesse. My pleasure. Brizzy, where can people find you? <gasps> on the internet. I'm Brizzy Voices on the YouTubes and Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. All right. Well, thank you for, for stopping yeah, by. Of course. Thanks for watching. This was a blast. And uh, we'll see you all next time with more Monster Camp. Amazing. Bye. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots. We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Out of that time of video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Oh, thank God. I don't need pants now. Hey, JC. What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a production of broadcast. Yeah, now sing the music. It's a production of broadcast. Bring the strippers and boots. Oh, it's a production of broadcast. Now here's to ask and answer one simple question. It's a production of